Hey guys, Mike here. And Meg. Hope you're all well. Me and Meg are on a bit of a hike today. Uh, meeting up with Christian from Husky Kennel Lapland. Uh, one of the activities he offers is igloo building and uh, he offered to let us come along and build an igloo with him today. So Meg's pretty excited. Yeah, I've always wanted to build and live, uh, live in an igloo. Yeah? Sleep in one. <laughs> At least for one night. Yeah, so it should be good fun. Perfect weather for it. We've got beautiful sun, plus conditions in the day, minus at night. The snow sort of really compacts together. And uh, unlike the winter where it's minus 20, minus 30, it's just powder. So you can't build an igloo in those conditions. But we've got Monts with us too. We're going to be spending the night in the igloo. So another 10 minutes of hiking, we should be there. He said, follow the trail. Hopefully we'll find him. <laughs> I do it like this. Hi there. <laughs> Just a little bit of warm up, yeah. actually. But that's uh, once <laughs> you're also helping a little bit. It didn't take us long to find Christian by following his snowshoe tracks, and he'd already started preparing a site to build on. We started by compacting the snow around the base of the igloo to get a feel for the location and the conditions. Digging down is also another method which can save on bricks and wall height but also allows the creation of a thermal cold sink near the entrance. This isn't something we will do this time but in a place like this there will always be a next time. Now that the snow is compacted we won't fall through as the sun warms it up and to build the igloo we are using a tool called the ice box. A device like this is useful for parts of the world that don't have the wind compacted snow conditions that suit traditional igloo building. You set a central point, adjust the pole to the desired diameter of your igloo and mark the circumference by pulling the device around the axis. We then set the device to a specific angle in relation to the igloo diameter and began filling it with snow like a mould. Once the mould is full you can release the device by pulling a yellow locking bar coupled with a latch on the axis pole which allows it to be moved along so the next brick can be created. It seems simple for the moment, but Christian stressed that foundations are the most important. So the first layer often takes the longest. foundations completed, I set the ice box to the layer 2 position. If our foundations are good, the remaining layers should hold the higher the walls become. We put the ice box over two of the first bricks and start the process again, making sure we maintain the correct angle. holding strong, so I set the ice box to position 3. We patch the remaining gap between the bricks and continue building the igloo. Things are moving much faster now, as with each layer, less bricks are required. I 
Things move extremely fast with the final layers, although care must be taken when compacting the snow, as you must ensure they bond to each other very well. It's not only the base of the bricks that need good adhesion, but also the side wall. But now the top layer is all that remains. Christian modifies the icebox so that we can patch a gap in the igloo wall and finish the roof with me inside. finished and I'm really keen to see how it turned out. Christian cuts a small entrance into the igloo and it's time to see what our home for the night looks like. Yeah. Oh. Wow. Welcome. That oh, looks great. Cool. It is actually. Oh, so long time. <laughs> yeah. There we are. So it should stay at around zero degrees in here, which is pretty comfortable. I know it's gonna be dropped to about minus seven tonight. So it should be an interesting night. But yeah, there's enough space in here actually. I think what I might do is just kind of patch this hole a tiny bit with some, our bag or something and, and leave obviously a gap for air. And uh, that'll just help with the heat a little bit more, but it's nice. Well, we finished the igloo. It took us about two and a half hours. It's kind of small, but smaller it is, the easier it is to heat up. And uh, Christian's gone home, he's just gone off on his snow scooter. But we're just gonna go up into this little patch here, make a, a fire, cook some food. It should be good. Obviously making the igloo in this kind of weather, you get quite damp, like my trousers and the clothing sort of takes in a bit of moisture. And now it's gonna to start to get cold, the sun's starting to go down. And that water then freezes in your clothes. So it's nice to have a fire. Obviously you wanna make some food, but also just to dry off and dry off your gloves and Anything else you need to dry off before you go to bed.
Sí. Sí. Good boy. Found you the perfect chopping board, my love. I think this is pretty good, right? Proper bushcraft. <laughs> if I strip a few more pieces, we clean that up. That, that's, that'll do, won't it? Yeah. Yeah. There you go, some green woodcup type of fungi. It's kind of beautiful actually. If you could dry that and stabilize it and make a knife scale from it, that would be something to see. There used to be a company in London that made furniture and they'd build it out of uh, trees that they'd infected with green woodcup. Good stuff. What's going on? Why are we why are we not going home? That's looking finger licking good, love. Yeah. That's better than a KFC's popcorn chicken. Is it? That's a relief. It's fantastic, Meg. Thank you so much. It's good.
Oh, Chicken down. Nugglet down already. 20 second rule. <laughs> Five minute rule. Five minute rule. Well, that was a lovely meal, Megan. Thank you. You're very welcome. Not enough popcorn chicken, though. <laughs> you got plenty. Way to a man's heart is through stomach, love. <laughs> and you're stealing the popcorn chicken straight out of mine. <laughs> I think Monts is a little bit nervous, Meg. I think to... we should see what, whether we can fit him in the igloo or not. Yeah, let's try it now. It's crunch time. Let's do it. room like in there. <laughs> There's none is there? Oh no, such a good boy. Is there much room in there Meg? Um, he could definitely lie in between the two of us. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Or, or we can be side by side and he can be on one of the sides. Okay. Why don't you come in and have a look? Dana. Yeah, there is enough room, isn't there? Yeah. Should we grab our uh, bedding and our gear then? Yeah, we yeah. get it set up. Cool. Yeah. Leave all the pots and pans up there. Yeah. So do you want to sort your bedding out first and then? Okay. Look how cosy it is in here. Yeah, nice. It's actually really warm in here. Let's take my boots off though. Yeah, nice. your night in an igloo? Yeah, it was good apart from you <laughs> moving every five seconds. You were snoring like a bear. Yeah, I was trying to sleep. I did have a 70 kilo dog leaning on me though. <laughs> excuses, excuses. <laughs> Mate, this is our this is our new life. How are you feeling about our new life? Are you missing home it's like sleeping sitting here you, you excited about tonight we're we're staying here tonight as well This is my sleep setup. I have done vi a video on this before and shown it. Um, this used to do me almost all the year back in the UK, but here, uh, no chance. So this bag goes down to about zero, minus one at the best. 
um, you can extend the season of it a little bit more with something like a thermal layer. The bivy bag adds a bit of protection as well and takes the wind away from, from bashing the heat out of it. That just really depends on your, your setup. So it's a Dutch Army bivy bag, really nice quality one. And uh, you've got some loops underneath if you want to put the sleep mat underneath and you don't want it slipping, but I just have it inside. But the sleeping bag's a laminar flame from Mountain Hardware. It's not a bad bag actually. For a synthetic bag, it compresses really small. And if you want a zero degree bag in synthetic, because it's good for moisture, then uh, yeah, it's a really good bag and it's very light and warm. This is the sleep mat I have. It's a Neo Air by Thermarest. And this does, uh, this is pretty much an all season mat. So it's got an R rating of 4.5. So you can do extremely cold winters in it. So it'd be great for this country, although I think when it's dropping below minus 30, it'd be interesting to try it out and see how it is. But it's got a valve at the top, so you push this in, this baffle, you blow into it, inflates. It's kind of an interesting system and it stops moisture getting in and allows moisture to escape as well, which is kind of important. But you do have a small valve too. So I really like this. It's kind of expensive, but uh, it's more about what's un underneath you than what's on top in all fairness and this really does iron out the bumps it's pretty thick at about two inches and it's super warm as well and it packs down to about 12 i think it's between 12 and 19 ounces i think this one's 12 and the extra large one's 19 so 12 ounces is, is very very small and this stays in the bivy bag at all times so i'll take the sleeping bag out air it out compress it in the in the dry bag and uh this whole system gets rolled away and it sits at the bottom of my pack and as a pillow I just usually scrunch up a jacket or a jumper or something like that and I find that pretty comfortable. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. We uh, had good fun inside the igloo, it was great. Very warm, definitely something we're gonna do next year. I mean, it's spring now, so the snow's gonna be gone real fast. So we're kind of glad we got to do this when we did. But uh, we're gonna make our way back to the, to the car now, hike back, tidy up the fire before we go. Yeah, it was good, wasn't it? Yeah, it was really good fun. Hopefully we can come back again and uh maybe yeah. to get one more night out of it yeah absolutely it may may melt in about 10 days to two weeks so yeah depending on the weather we'll have to see yeah it's still pretty cold at night so hopefully it will hang on for a while but yeah we'll get this uh this old guy home as well i bet i expect he'll fall straight asleep start snoring but uh yeah i think he enjoyed himself ish but <laughs> anyway <laughs> thanks for watching Appreciate you watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you want to see more videos like this, then uh, click the notification bell at the bottom of the video. I think it's probably somewhere around there. <laughs> and uh, you know, you can get notifications for, for more videos as we're going to be going out and doing a lot of wild camping now the spring and the summer are here. So uh, thanks for watching. Bye guys. Take care. Come on, see. <laughs>